I have to read stories and do a review on them. So I figure, and one of them is required to be a, and three of them, um, three certain books out of a certain selection called Rosie's. And I don't like it. So let me just post a Snapchat story real quick. Hey guys, I'm live streaming me reading a story on YouTube. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, come and check it out. You guys know where to find me. Alright, so I guess we can go ahead and get started. I would start with, ah, screw it, I should start with chapter one just in case other people in the future come back to watch this. Even though most likely people in the future are coming to read this, and eh, they've probably already left by now. Because there's probably better versions. Alright. Alright. So, the hours were bad, the tips were worse, and the majority of my co- I took French, and I can't remember for that. You know what? You guys can Google it. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> it was a summer job, and that l kept Nana off my back. It also prevented my various aunts, uncles, and kitchen sink cousins, wow, that's just rude, um, from feeling like they had to offer me temporary employment in their restaurant, butcher shop, legal practice, boutique. Given the size of my father's very large, very extended, and very Italian family, oh, so that was Italian. The possibilities, well, it could have been French. It's more French than Italian, and the French take stuff from Italian, so who knows? Anyways, um, the possibilities were endless, but it was always a variation on the same theme. My dad lived halfway, half a world away. My mother was missing, presumed dead. I was everyone's problem and nobody's teenager. I was everyone's problem and nobody's. Teenager presumed trouble. Order up! With practice ease, I grabbed a plate of pancakes this, I flip the page, um, side of bacon, with my left hand and a two-handed breakfast burrito, jalapenos on the side, with my right. If the SATs didn't go well in fall, I'd have a, I, I had a real future ahead of me in the crappy diner industry. Pancakes with a side of bacon, breakfast burrito, jalapenos on the side. I slid the plates onto the table. Anything else I can get for you, gentlemen? Before either of them opened their mouths, I knew exactly what these two were going to say. The guy on the left was going to ask for extra butter, and the guy on the right, he was going to need another glass of water before... <coughs> water before he could even think about the, those jalapenos. Ten to one odds. He didn't even like them. Guys who actually liked jalapenos didn't order them on the side. My breakfast bur burrito just didn't want people to think he was a. W Mr. Breakfast Burrito did just didn't want people to think he was a wuss. Only the word he, only the word he would have used wasn't wuss. Whoa there, Ca Cassie! I told myself sternly, let's keep it PG. As a gen general rule, I didn't curse much, but I had a bad habit of picking up on other people's quirks. Put me in a room with a bunch of English people, and I'd walk out with a British accent. It wasn't intentional, I just spent a lot of time over the years getting inside other people's heads. That's fucked up. <clears throat> Occupational hazard, not mine. My mother's. Could I get a few more of these of these butter packets, the guy on the left asked. I nodded and waited. More water, the guy on the right grunted. He puffed out his chest and ogled my boobs. Well, I'm a, apparently a female in this story. All right. I forced a smile. I'll be right back with the, that water. I managed to keep from adding perverts to the end of the sentence, but only just. I'm just like, I need a drink. <clears throat> I was still holding out that a guy with his late twenties who pretended to like spicy food and made a point staring at his teeny, teenage waitress's chest like he was at training for the ogling Olympics might be equally showy when it came to leaving tips. Then again, I thought as I went to for refills, he might turn out to be the kind of guy who stiffs the little bitty waitress just to prove he can. Absent mindedly, I turned the details to the situation over in my mind. W my, in my mind, the way Mr. Breakfast Burrito was dressed. 
His likely occupation, the fact that he, his friend who ordered the pancakes was wearing a much more expensive watch. He'll fight to grab the check, and then tip like crap. I hoped I was wrong, but was fairly certain that I wasn't. Other kids spent their preschool years singing their way through the ABCs. I grew up learning a different alphabet, behavior, personality, environment. My mother called them the BPEs. And they were the tricks of her trade. Thinking that way wasn't the kind of thing you could just turn off. Not even once you were old enough to understand that <clears throat> when your mother told pe people she was a psychic, she was lying. And when she took her their money, it was fraud. And even now that she was gone, I couldn't keep from figuring people out any more than I could give up breathing blinking or counting down the days until I turn 18. Table for one, a low amused voice jostled me back into reality. The voice's owner looked like the type of boy who would have been a more at the more at home in a country club than a diner. Maybe I shouldn't fucking read this shit. Dear God, I can't even speak. His skin was perfect. His hair artfully artfully amused. Even though he phrased his words like they were a question, they weren't. Not really. Sure, I said, grabbing a menu right this way. A closer observation told me that Country Club was about my age. A smirk played across his perfect features, and he walked with a swagger of high school nobility. Just looking at him made me feel like a surf. This this okay? I asked, leading him to a table near the window. This is fine, he said, slipping into the chair. Casually, he surveyed the room with bulletproof confidence. Get a lot of traffic in here on weekends? Sure, I replied. I was starting to wonder if I'd lost the ability to speak in complex sentences. From the look on the boy's face, he probably was too. I'll give you a minute to look over the menu. He didn't respond, and I spent my minutes bringing pancakes and Mr. Bur Burrito their checks. Plural. I figured that if I split it in half, I might end up with a half-decent tip. I'll be your cashier whenever you're ready, I said, fake smile firmly in place. I turned back toward the kitchen and caught the boy by the window watching me. It wasn't an I'm ready to order stare. It was, <clears throat> I wasn't sure what it was. Actually, but every bone in my body told me it was something. The lit niggling sensation that th there was a key detail that I was missing about this whole situation about him wouldn't go away. Boys like that didn't usually eat in places like this. They didn't stare at girls like me. I didn't realize I was a girl. <clears throat> Self-conscious and wary, I crossed her room. Did you, decide, did you decide what you'd like? I asked. There was no getting out of taking his order. So I let my hair fall on my face, obscuring his view of it. Three eggs, he said, hazel eyes fixed on what he could see of mine. Side of pancakes. Side of ham. I didn't need to write the order down, but I suddenly found myself wishing for a pen just so I'd have something to hold on to. What kind of eggs, I asked. You tell me, the boys. Ward caught me off guard. Excuse me? Yes. I stared at him through the wisps of hair, still covering my face. You want me to guess how you want your eggs cooked? He said. He smiled. Why not? And just like that, the gauntlet was thrown. Not scrambled, I said, thinking out loud. Scrambled eggs were too average, too common, and this was a guy who liked to be a little different. Not too different, though, which ruled out poached, at least in a place like this. Sunny side up would have been too messy for him. Over hard wouldn't be messy enough. Over easy, I was sh I was as sure of the conclusion as I was of the color of his eyes. He smiled and closed his menu. Are you going to tell me if I was right, I asked, not because I needed confirmation, but because I wanted to see how he would respond. The boy shrugged. Now, where would the fun be in that? I wanted to stay there staring until I figured him out, but I didn't. I put his order in, I delivered his food, the lunch rush snuck up on me, and by the time I went back to check, out, check on him, the boy by the window was gone. He hadn't even waited for his check. He just left the $20 on the table. I had just about decided that he would make me play guessing games to his heart's consent, but for a twelve for a twelve dollar tip, then I noticed the bill wasn't the only thing he'd left. There was also a business card. 
I picked it up, stark white, black letters, evenly spaced, there was a seal in the upper left hand corner, but relatively little text. A name, a job title, a phone number, across the top of the card, there were four words. Four little words that knocked the wind out of me as I, as effectively as a jab to the chest. I pocketed the card and the tip, I went back to the kitchen, I caught my breath, and then I looked at it again. Tanner Briggs, the name. Special Agent. Job Title. Federal Bureau of Investigation. Four words. But I stared at them so hard that my vision blurred and I could only make out three letters. What in the world had I done to attract the attention of the FBI? Dun dun dun! <clears throat> Alright, chapter two, everybody. Just a second, I need to fix something on my live stream real quick. And then we'll be getting right back into this. Um, like I said, this is my first time doing this on the channel. I'll probably do it more in the future because it's like the only way I can motivate myself to do this kind of stuff for school. Sorry, I'm sorry for those of you that are going to end up watching this in the future and be like, Why did he do this? I, he doesn't usually do this. It's a gaming channel. But, you know, I kind of have no really choice. And I know I can at least uh motivate myself to do do it if i have this so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and insert an ad all right <clears throat> all right <clears throat> excuse me chapter two after an eight-hour shift, my body was bone-tired, but my mind was whirling, 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 I don't know. I wanted to shut myself in my room, collapse on my bed, and figure out what the Hello Kitty had happened that afternoon. Ah, that's cute. Hello Kitty. Unfortunately, it was Sunday. There she is, Cassie. We are. We were just about to send the boys out looking for you. My aunt Tasha, more reasonable of my father's various siblings, so she didn't weak and ask me if I had found myself a boyfriend to occupy my time. That was Uncle Rio's job. Our little, our little heartbreaker, eh? You out there breaking hearts? Of course she is. I've been a regular fixture at Sunday night dinners. Ever since social services had dropped me off at, on my father's doorstep, metaphorically, thank God. When I was 12, after five years, I still hadn't ever heard Uncle Rear ask a question that he did not immediately proceed to answer himself. I don't have a boyfriend, I said. This was a well-established script, and that was my line. Promise. What were we, what are we talking about? One of Uncle Rio's sons asked, plopping himself down on the living room sofa, dangling his legs over the side. Cassie's boyfriend, Uncle Rio replied. I rolled my eyes. Uh, I don't have a boyfriend. Cassie's secret boyfriend, Uncle Rio amended. I think you have me confused with Sophia and Katie. I said, under a normal second sentence, I wouldn't have thrown any of my female cousins under the bus, but, des but desperate times call for desperate measures. They're far more likely to have secret boyfriends than I am. Bah! Uncle Javier said, Sophia's boyfriends are never secret. And on it went. Good natured ribbing, family jokes. I played the part, letting their energy in infect me, saying what they wanted me to say, smiling the smiles they wanted to see. It was warm and safe and happy, but it wasn't me. It never was. As soon as I was sure I wouldn't be missed, I ducked into the kitchen. Cassandra, good, my grandmother. Of a deep and flower, her gray hair pulled into a loose spun at the top at the nape of her scalp, I'm assuming? I can't flip a page, you know? Oh boy, I almost ripped it too. <clears throat> okay, so... Do, do I need to read that, re read that line from the previous page? God dang it, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> <clears throat> her hair pulled in, into a loose bun at the nape of her neck. Gave me a warm smile. How is work? Despite her little old lady appearance, Nana ruled the entire family like a general directing her troops. Right now, I was the one drifting out of formation. Work was work, I said. Not bad. 
but not good either. She, she narrowed her eyes. If I didn't play this right, I'd have ten job offers within an was within the hour. Family took care of family, even when family was perfectly capable of taking care of herself. Today was actually decent, I said, trying to sound cheerful. Someone left a, me a $12 tip. And also, I had silently a business card from the FBI. <clears throat> good, Nana said. That is good. You have a good day. Yeah, you had a good day. Yeah, Nana, I said crossing the room to kiss her cheek because I knew it would make her happy. It... Oh, wow, that was crazy, brother. <clears throat> Anyways, it was a good day. By the time everyone cleared out at nine, the card felt like a lead in my pocket. I tried to help Nana with the dishes, but she shooed me upstairs in the quiet of my own room. I could feel the energy draining out of me like air out of a slowly wilting balloon. I sat down on my bed and then let myself fall backward. The old springs groaned with the impact, and I closed my eyes. My right hand found its way to my pocket, and I pulled out the card. It was a joke. It had to be a joke. It, that was why he, the pretty country club boy had felt off to me. That was why he'd been... He'd taken an interest to mock me, but he didn't really seem the type. I opened my eyes and looked at the card. This time, I let myself read it out loud. Special Agent Tanner Briggs, Federal Bureau of Investigation. A few hours in my pocket, I hadn't changed the text on the card. FBI? Seriously? Who is this guy? Who is this guy trying to kid? He looks 16, 17 max. Not like a special agent, just special. I couldn't push that thought down. My eyes flitted and reflectively toward the mirror on my wall. It was one of the great ironies of my life that I had inherited all of my mother's features, but none of the magic with which they'd come together on her face. She'd been beautiful. I was odd. Odd looking. Oddly quiet. Always the odd one out. Even after five years, I still couldn't think of my mother without thinking of the last time I'd seen her. Shooing me out of her dressing room, a wide smile on her face. Then I thought about coming back to the dressing room. About the blood on the floor. The meat walls on the mirror. I hadn't been gone long. I opened the door. Snap out of it, I told myself. I sat up and pushed my back up against the headboard. Unable to quit thinking about the smell of blood. And that moment of knowing it was my mother's and praying it wasn't. Open the page. Doopy doopy doop. <clears throat> What if that was what this was about? What if the card wasn't a joke? What if the FBI was looking into my mother's murder? It's been five years, I told myself. But the case was still open. My mother's body was never found. Well, had never been found, my bad. <laughs> Based on the moment of um, the amount of blood, that was what the police had been looking for from the beginning. A body. I turned the business card over in my hands. On the back, there was a handwritten note. Cassandra, it said, please call. That was it. My name. And a directive to call in the capital letters. Please, no, no explanation, no nothing. Below those words, someone had scribbled a second set of instructions in small, sharp letters, barely readable. I traced my fingers over the letters and thought about the boy from the diner. Maybe he wasn't the special agent. So what makes him... What? The, so that makes him what? The messenger? I didn't have an answer. But the word scrawled across the bottom of the card stood out every bit as much as the... Every bit as much as the special agent Tanner's Briggs please call. If I, if I were you, I wouldn't. <clears throat> you. You. You're good at waiting. Waiting for the right moment. Waiting for... The right girl. You have her now, and you still, and still, you're waiting, waiting for her to, for her to open those eyes and see you, waiting for her to scream and scream and scream. Well, that sounds like sex. <clears throat> and realize that no one can hear her but you. You know how this will go. How she'll be angry, then scared, then swear up and down that if you let her go, she won't tell a soul. She'll lie to you, she'll be try to manipulate you, and you'll have to show her the way you've showed so many others. 
how that just won't do. But not yet. Right now, she's still sleeping. Beautiful, but not as beautiful as she'll be when she's when you're done. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Chapter 3, everybody. Alright. <clears throat> Here we go. It took me two days. But I called the number. Of course I did. Because even though the there was a 99% chance this was some kind of jokes, there was still a 1% chance that it wasn't. I didn't realize I was holding my breath until someone picked up. This is Briggs. I couldn't pinpoint to what was more disarming, the fact that this Agent Briggs had apparently given me the number to direct to his direct line, or the way he answered, like, saying hello would have been a waste of breath. Hello? As if he could read my mind, Special Anger Agent Briggs spoke again. Anyone there? This is Cassandra Hobbs, I said. Cassie? Cassie, something about the way Agent Briggs said my name made me think that he'd know me before I said a single word, that I didn't go by my full name. I'm glad you called. He waited for me to say something else, but I stayed silent. Everything you said or did was a data point you put out there in the world, and I didn't want to give this man any information that he that I had to. <clears throat> Not until I knew what he was wanted for me. I'm sure you must be wondering why I contacted you. Why I had Michael contact you. Michael. So now the boy from the diner had a name. I have an offer I'd like to consider. An offer? It amazed me that the, my voice stayed every bit as calm as I, and even as his. I believe this conversation best ha best had in person, Miss Hobbs. Is there somewhere you'd like you would be comfortable meeting? He knew what he was doing. Let me pick the location because if he spec if he'd specify it, one, I might not have gone. I probably should have refused to meet with him anyway, but I couldn't for the same reason that I had to pick up the phone call and phone and call. Five years was a long time to go without a bo body, without answers. Do you have an office? I asked. The slight pause on the other end of the phone told me that wasn't what he had expected me to say. I could have asked him to meet me at the diner or a coffee shop near the high school or anywhere that I would have had the home court advantage. But I had been taught to believe that there was no home court advantage. You could tell more about a stranger by seeing their house than you ever would by inviting them to yours. Besides, this guy if this guy wasn't really an FBI agent, and if he had some kind of pervert and ugh, if he was some kind of pervert and this was some kind of game, I figured it'd, he'd probably have to have a heck of a time arranging a meeting at the local FBI office. I don't actually work out in out of Denver, he said, but I'm sure I can get something up. Probably not a pervert then. He gave me an address I, get, I gave him a time. And Cassandra, I wondered what Angel Briggs hoped to accomplish by using my full, my full first name. Yes, yes. This isn't about your mother. I went to the meeting anyway. Of course I did. Special Agent Tanner Briggs knew enough about me to know that my mother's case was the reason I'd followed the instructions on the card and called. I wanted to know how he'd come by that information. If he looked at her police file, if he would look at at her file, provided I gave him whatever it was he wanted from me. I wanted to know why Special Agent Tanner Briggs had made it his business to know about me, the same way a man shopping for a new computer might have memorized the specs on the model that had caught, him eye, that caught his eye. What floor the woman beside me in the elevator was in her early 60s. Her silvery blonde hair was pulled back into a neat ponytail at the nape of her neck, and the suit was she was wearing was perfectly tailored. All business, just like Special Agent Tanner Briggs. Fifth floor, I said, please. Fifth floor, please, I said. With nervous energy to burn, I snuck another glance at the woman and started piercing my way through her life story, as told by the way she was standing her clothes, they had the faint accent in her speech, the clear coat of polish on her nails. She was married, no kids. When she started in the FBI, it had been a boys' club, behavior, personality, environment. I could practically hear my mother coaching me through the impromptu two analysts. Fifth floor, the woman. The woman's words were brisk, and I added another entry of my mental column, impatient. 
obligingly, I stepped out of the elevator, the door closed behind me, and I appraised my surroundings. It looked so normal. If it hadn't been for the security check checkpoint out front, the and the visitor's badge pinned to the to my faded black sundress, I never would have pegged this place for a a place devoted to fighting federal crime. So what were you expecting, a dog and pony show? I recognized the voice instantly. The boy from the diner, Michael. He sounded amused, and when I turned to face him, there was a familiar smirk dancing its way through his features. One that he probably could have suppressed if he could could have suppressed if he had the least inclination to try. I wasn't expecting anything. I told him, "I have no expect expectations." He gave me a knowing look. No expectations. No disappointments. I can't tell if that was his appraisal of my current m mental state or m the motto by which he lived his own life. In fact, I was having a trouble getting a any handling on his personality at all. He traded his striped polo for a formatting black t-shirt and his jeans for a khaki slacks. He looked as out of place here as he had at the diner. Like, maybe that was the point. You know, he said conveniently, I knew you'd come. I raised an eyebrow at him, even though he told me not to. He shrugged. My inner boy scout had to try. As I got, as this guy had an inner boy scout, I had an inner flamingo. <laughs> what? <laughs> so are you so are you here to take me to Special Agent Tanner Briggs? I asked. The words came out cur curtly, but at least I didn't sound fascinated, infatuated, or even the least bit drawn to the sound of his voice. Hmm. In response to my question, Michael made a non-committal, non-committal noise under his breath, and he and inclined his head as close to a yes as I was going to get. He led me around the bullpen and then down a hallway. Neutral carpet, neutral walls, a neutral expression on his criminally hand, some face. So what does Briggs have on you? Michael asked. I could feel him watching me, looking for a surge of emotion, any emotion to tell him if this question had a had hit a nerve. It hadn't. If you want me to be nervous about this, I told him, because that much was clear from his words, and you told me not to come. He smirked. He's not smart, he smiled. But there was a hard glint to it, an edge. I guess you're I guess you could say I I'm contrary. I snorted. That was one word for it. Are you going to give me even a hint on what's going on here? I asked, as we near the end of the hall. He shrugged, that depends. Are you going to stop playing who's got the best poker face with me? That surprised a laugh out of me, and I realized that it had been a long time since I laughed because I cr couldn't help it. I was laughing too. Michael's smile lost its edge, and for a second, the expression utterly changed his face. If he'd been a handsome before, he was beautiful now, but it didn't last. As quickly as the lightness had come, it faded. I meant what I wrote on that card, he said how softly. He nodded to close the office door. If I were you, I wouldn't go in there. I knew then, the way I always knew things, that Michael had been in my shoes once and that he had opened the door. His warning was genuine, but I opened it too. Miss Hobbs, please come in. With one glan last glance at Michael, I stepped into the room. Au, au revoir, the boy with the excellent poker face said, punctuating, punctuating the words with an exaggerated flick of his wrist. Special Agent Tanner Briggs clearly cleared his throat. So the, <coughs> the door behind me cleared his throat. The door behind closed behind me. For better or for or for worse, I was here to meet with an FBI agent alone. I'm glad he came, Cassie. Please take a seat. He didn't say please, but I added that in because it's fucking gentlemanlike, motherfuckers. Agent Briggs was a younger than I was younger than I had expected, based on his. Eh, yeah, I just want to make sure it's still doing its thing. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Agent Briggs was younger than I expected, based on his phone voice. The gears in my brain turned slowly, incorporating his age to what I knew. An older man who took pain to appear businesslike was guarded. A twenty-nine-year-old. 
who did the sa same wanted to be taken seriously. There was a difference. Obediently, I took a seat. Major Briggs stayed in his chair but leaned forward. The desk between us was so clean but for a stack of papers and two pens, one of which was missing its cap. He wasn't naturally neat then. For some reason, I found that comforting. He was ambitious but not inflexible. Are you finished? He asked me. His voice wasn't curt. If anything, he sounded generally curious. Finished with what? Analyzing me, he said. I've only been in this office for two hours. I couldn't even guess what it was that, what it is that has caught your attention. But I figured out something would with natural, with naturals. Something always does. Well, dang. Roll credits. I mean, they just said the book title after all. I'm gonna go ahead and insert an ad right here. Perfect timing. So just a second, guys. Do, 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 do. I'm taking this moment to text somebody. Right now I have the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess uh, theme song stuck in my head. Uh, from the trailer. Bum bum bum. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Naturals. He said the word like he was expecting me to repeat it with a question marking my tone. I didn't say anything. The less I gave him, the more he'd show me. You're good at reading people, at taking little details and figuring out the big picture. Who they are. What they want. How they operate. He smiled. What kind of eggs they like? You invited me here because I'm good at guessing what kind of eggs people like, I asked. And able to keep the incredible... Incredulousness... I can't even say that. Incredulousness? Out of my voice. He drummed his finger over to the desktop. I asked you here because see, you have a natural aptitude for something that most people could spend a lifetime trying to learn. It's not really natural because she learned it at a young age. Young children will learn things quickly. You fucking are an FBI agent. You don't even know that, sir? <clears throat> Anyways. I wondered if he'd said most people he was referring to, at least in part, to me. He took a, me my continued silence as some kind of argument. Are you telling me that you don't read people? That you can't tell me right now whether I'd play, rather play basketball or golf? Basketball. But he'd want people to think the answer is golf. You could try to explain to me how you figure things out, how you figure people out, Cassie. But the difference between you and the rest of the world is that to explain how you just figured out that I, I'd rather play a bloody no, uh, rather get a bloody nose on the basketball court than tee off with the boss. You'd have to backtrack. You'd have to sort out what the clues were and how you'd make sense of them because you just do it. You don't even have to think about it. Not the way that I would. Not the way that my team would. You probably couldn't, you couldn't stop yourself if you tried. I had never talked about this. Not even with my mom, who taught me the parts of it that could be taught. People were people, but for better or for worse, most days they were just puzzles to me. Easy puzzles, hard puzzles, crosswords, mind benders, Sudoku. There was always an answer, and I couldn't stop myself from pushing until I found it. How do you know any of this? I asked the man in front of me. And even if it's true, even if I do have a really good instincts about people, what's it to you? He leaned forward. Oh boy, here we go. She already replied in fucking less than five minutes already. Sorry about this, folks. Another ad. Oh shit, I might have a date Valentine's Day. Alright.
Oh, hey, that works. That fucking works. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, lean forward. I know because I make it my business to know. What the fuck? That's as cliche as ever. <gasps> I know because I make it my business to know. Because I'm the one who convinced the FBI that they need to be looking for people like you. What the fuck is this, X-Men? <laughs> what do you want with me? He's back in his chair. What do you think I want to, with you, Cassie? Well, okay, that sounded wrong. My mouth went dry. I'm 17. Natural aptitudes like you peak in the teen years. Formal education, college, the wrong influences could all interfere with the incredible raw potential you have now. He folded his arm. He folded his hands neatly in front of him. I want to see. I want to see it. That you have the right influence. That your gift is molded into something extraordinary. Something that you can use to do an incredible amount of good in this world. Okay, that just sounds fucking evil when you put my voice like that. Part of me wanted to laugh at him, to walk out of the room, to forget that any of this had ever happened, but the other part of me just kept thinking of that for five years. I'd been living in limbo, like I was waiting for something without knowing what that what something was. You can take as much time as you need to think about it, Cassie. But what I'm offering you is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. Our program is one of a kind. It has potential to turn naturals, people like you, into something truly extraordinary. People like me, I repeated, my mind going 90 miles an hour, and Michael. The second part was a guess, but not much of one. In the two minutes we'd spent talking, been walking to his office, Michael had come closer to figuring out what was going inside my head than anyone I'd ever met. And Michael, as he spoke, Agent Briggs' face became more animated. Gone was that hard and professional. This personal, this program was something he believed in. And he had something to prove. What would becoming a, a part of this program entail, I asked, measuring his, his response. The enthusiasm is on his face morphed into something more intense. His eyes bored into mine. How do you feel about moving to Washington, D.C.? <clears throat> How would I feel about moving to Chapter 4? How many chapters is in this damn book? Oh, sheesh. Chapter 30, fucking eight. All right, guys, we have a lot to get through in the next, like, three days, I guess, four or five days. How would I feel about moving to D.C.? I'm so I'm 17, I re reiterated. A better, que a better question it might be how my legal guardians would feel about it. You want to be the first minor I re I've recruited, Cassie. There are workarounds. Clearly, he had no not met my Nana. Five years ago, custody of Cassandra Hobbs was remitted to her biological father, one Vincent Batag Bataglia, um, United States Air Force Agent Briggs. Fourteen months after your appearance in his life, you chose to remain here with your paternal grandmother. I didn't ask how Agent Briggs had come by that information. He was FBI. He probably knew what color toothbrush I used. My point, Cassie, is that legally your father still <clears throat> still has custody, and I have every consonant that if you want this to happen, I can make it happen. Briggs paused again. As far as the outside world is concerned, we're, get, we're a gifted program, very selective, with the endorsements from very, some very important people. Your father is a career, is career military. He worries about the way you isolate yourself. That will make him easier to persuade than most. I started to open my mouth to ask how exactly he determined that my father was that my father worried, but Briggs held up a hand. I don't walk into a situation like this blind, Cassie. Once you were flagged in the system as a potential recruit, I did my homework. Flagged? I asked, raising my eyebrows. For what? I don't know. I wasn't the one who flagged you, and quite frankly, the details of your recruitment are moot. Unless you're interested in my offer, say the word if you're not, and I'll leave Denver tonight. Couldn't do that. Ancient Briggs probably knew it before he asked. He picked up my ca he picked up the capitalist pen and scrawled some notes on the edge of the one of his papers. If you have any questions, you can ask Michael. I have no doubt he'll painfully he'll be painfully honest with you about his experiences in the program so far. Briggs rolled his eyes heavenward into the gesture of an ex exasperation, an exasperation so universal that I almost forgot about the badge and the suit. 
and if there are any questions that I could answer for you, he trailed off and waited. I took the bait and started pressing him for details. Fifteen minutes later, my mind was reeling the program. That was how he referred to it. Again and again, was small, still in its trial ages. There a gent that was twofold. Oh man, first to educate those of us who selected to participate and hone our natural skills, and second to use those skills to aid the FBI from behind the scenes. I was free to leave the program at any time. I would be required to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So what question you haven't asked, Cassie, Agent Briggs, will disarm, so I'll answer it for you. I know about your personal history, about your mother's case, and while I have no information for you, I can say that after what you've been through, you have more more reasons than most to want to do what we do. And what is that? I asked, my throat tightening. <clears> the <throat> mere mention of the M ward. You said that you'll provide training and and that in exchange I'll be consulting for you consulting on what exactly? Training for what? He paused it, but whether he was address assessing me or adding emphasis to his answer I wasn't sure. We'll be helping on cold cases. Ones like the Bureau hasn't been able to close. I thought of my mother, the blood on the mirror and the sirens on the and the way I used to sleep with a phone hoping to, so desperately that it would ring. I had to force myself to keep breathing normally to keep my, from closing my eyes and picturing my mom's impish smiling face. What kind of cold cases I asked, my voice is catching in my throat, my lips felt suddenly dry and my eyes were felt wet. Agent Briggs had the de decency to ignore the emotion, how evident on my face. The exact assignments vary depending on you specially. Michael's a natural at reading emotions, so he spends a great deal of time going over the testimony and interrogation tapes. With his background, I expect he'll ultimately be a good fit for our white-collar crime division, but a person with his skills that can be useful in any kind of investigation. One of the other recruits in the program is a walking cyclopedia who sees patterns and probabilities everywhere she looks. We started her out on a crime scene analyst, and me? I asked. He was silent for a moment. I glanced at the papers on his desk and wondered if any of them were about me. You're a natural profiler. profiler. You can look at a pattern of behavior and figure out the personality of the perpetrator. Or guess how a given individual is likely to behave in the future. That tends to come in handy when we have a series of interrelated crimes, but no definite suspect. I read in between the lines of that statement, but wanted to be sure. Interrelated crimes? Serial crimes, he said, choosing a different word and letting it hang in the air around us. Abductions, arson, sexual assault. assault. <clears throat> he, he paused, and then, I, and then I knew what the next word out of his mouth was going to be before it, um, before he said it, murder. The truth he'd been dancing around for the best part the, for the past hour was suddenly incredibly clear. He and his team, this program, they just didn't want to teach me how to hone my skills. They wanted to use them to catch killers, serial killers. <clears throat> you. <clears throat> you look at the body and feel a rush of anger, rage. It's supposed to be sublime. You're supposed to decide. You're supposed to feel the life go out of her. She isn't supposed to rush you. She shouldn't be dead yet, but she is. She shouldn't be perfect now, but she's not. She didn't scream enough, and then she screamed too much, and she called your name. Names. Names that he used to call you, and you got angry. It was over too fast, too soon, and it wasn't your f okay. That this is talking about sex. <laughs> it was over too fast and too soon. It wasn't your fault. Damn wrong. Damn it. It was hers. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one who made you angry. She's the one who ruined it. <laughs> You're better than this. You're supposed to be looking at her body and feeling the power, the rush. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> I love this so much. God. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
It was over too fast, too soon, and it wasn't your fault. Damn it, it was hers. She's the one who made you angry. She's the one who ruined it. You'd be you're better than this. You're supposed to be looking at her body and feeling the power, the rush. You're supposed to- She's supposed to be a work of art. But she's not. You drive the knife into her stomach again and again, blinded to anything else. She's not perfect. She's not beautiful. She's nothing. You're nothing, but you won't stay nothing for long. Okay, that's where it gets creepy sounding. I'm going to read chapter 5, and then I'm going to get off for the night for the live stream. We're going to try reading uh, 10 pages in the next one, which will probably be tomorrow. But I doubt... Eh, I can probably read up 10 in less than an hour tomorrow. <clears throat> I gave Agent Briggs the go-ahead to talk to my father. My father called me less than a week after I told my dad this was uh, what I wanted. I got the word from Briggs that... <clears throat> that Briggs had obtained the necessary permissions. My paperwork had been gone through. That night, I quit my job at the diner. I took a shower, changed my, into my pants, and prepared for World War III. I was going to do this. I'd known from the almost the moment that Agent Briggs had started speaking. I cared about my grandmother, and I did. And I knew how she, hard she and the rest of the family tried to make me feel love. No matter how I'd come to them or how much of my mother there was in me, I never really belonged here. A part of me me had never really left a that fateful theater that left that fateful theater theater the lights the crowd the blood maybe i never would but agent briggs was offering me a chance to do something about it i might never solve my own mother's case but this w program would turn me into su the kind of person who would catch killers who would who could make sure that another little girl in the nether life with another mother would never have to see what i had to see what i what i had seen it was morbid and horrifying than the very last life the family would have imagined for me and i wanted to make it more than i had ever wanted anything i combed my fingers through my hair wet <clears throat> wet it looked dark and enough to pass for a brown instead of auburn the steam from my from the shower had brought some color into my cheeks i looked at like the type of girl who could who could belong here with this family with wet hair i didn't even i didn't look so much like my mother chicken and i leveled the insult at my own reflection and then pushed back from the mirror I could stay here until my hair dried. In fact, I could have I could stay here until my hair went gray, and that wouldn't make the conversation I was about to have any easier. <clears throat> Downstairs was curled up in a Nana was cur cur curled up in a recliner in the living room, reading the glasses perched on the, her nose and a large print romance novel open in her lap. She looked up the second I stepped in the stepped in the room her eager eyes sharp you were you are ready for better early she said and no small amount of suspicion in her voice nana had successfully raised eight children if i had been the type to make trouble there would have been none that i could have stirred up that she hadn't already seen i quit my job today i said and the sparkle in her eyes told me she had that um, those had been the wrong words to lead with I don't need you to get me a new one, I added hastily. Nada had a dismissive sound a breath of her under her breath. Of course not. You are independent. <clears throat> you do not need anything from your old Nada. You do you do not care if she worries. Well this was going well. I don't want you to worry, I said, but something's come up, an opportunity. I already i I'd already made the executive the decision that Nada didn't need to know what I'd be doing. Or why? I stuck the cover story that AJ Brooks has given me. There's a school, I said. A special program. The director came to see me last week. Nah, harumpted. He talked to Dad, the director of this program. Talked to your father? Nah, nah, repeated. And what did my son say to this man who could not be bothered to introduce himself to me? I explained as much as I could. I gave the, her a pamphlet that AJ Briggs has give, had given me. One that I didn't mention words like profile, uh, profiling or seal your killers or FBI. A small program, I said, at a um, kind of group home. And your father, sa he said you could go, not on near road. Her eyes at the smiling kids on the front of the pamphlet, like they were personally responsible for leading her precious granddaughter astray. He already signed the papers. 
thought I. I looked down at my hands, which had gone had woven themselves together at my waist. I'm going to go. There was a silence, then a sharp intake of breath, and then an explosion. I didn't speak Italian, but based on the emph emphatic gestures and the way she was spitting out the words, I was able to make educated guess at a translation. Nana's granddaughter was moving across cross current and enrolling a government sponsored gifted program over her dead and rotting corpse. No race stages an intervention like my father's family stages an intervention. Bassignal had nothing to um, the Batal Bat Batagalia s signal, and less than 24 hours l after Nana sent out the distress call, and the family had gathered in force. There was yelling and screaming and crying, food, lots of food. I was threatened and cajoled, be bro beating and clapped to million bosoms, but for the first time since I'd met half of my family, but for the first time since. I'd met half the, uh, met this half the family tree. I couldn't just temper my reactions to theirs. I couldn't give them what they wanted. I couldn't pretend. The noise built to a crescendo, and I drew into myself and waited for the for it to pass. Eventually, they noticed that I wasn't saying anything. Cassie, sweetheart, aren't you happy here? One of my aunts fi asked finally. The rest of the table fell. I'm. I couldn't say any more than. That I saw the realization pass over their faces. It's not that I'm not happy, I interjected quickly. It's just, for once they heard what I wasn't saying, from the moment they'd learned of my existence, I'd been a um, family to them. They'd been, they'd realize, they hadn't realized that in my own eyes, I'd always been, and maybe always should be, an outsider. I need to do this, I said. My voice, as quiet as theirs, had been loud for my mom. That was as close to the truth than I'd ever meant to tell them. You think your mom would have wanted you to do this? Nana asked. To leave the family that loves you, that will take care of you, to go off on, on the other side of the country alone, to God knows what? It was meant to, as a rhetorical question, but I answered it vehemently. Yes, I paused, expecting an argument, but I didn't get one. I know you don't like it, and I hope you don't hate me for it, but I have to do this. I stood up. I leave in three days. I really like, <clears throat> I really like to come back for Christmas, but if you don't want me here, I understand. Not across the room in a second, surprisingly spry for for someone of her age, she spoke um, poked a vicious finger into my chest. You come home for Christmas, she said, a, in a manner that made it quite clear she considered it in order. You ever think about not coming home? She narrowed her eyes, drew. <clears throat> poking her neck in menacing fashion, capiche? I smiled at the t at the edge of my lips, and tears burned into my eyes. Capiche? And that's gonna be end of one through five, for everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It went for an hour long. Yeah. <clears throat> in the next reading, I guess I'll be doing a chapter six through uh, do chapter six up till chapter 15 I believe that would be a good stopping point which will be let's see we're on page 43 let's see that will be I'll be to page uh not 120 because 120 is chapter 16 now ah, here we go chapter 1 uh, 15 is on page 115 so 43 one one five. That'll be a good uh sixty uh sixty no seventy something pages. Seventy two pages. That will be a good seventy that'll be a good seventy two pages to read. I could read seventy two pages in an hour or so. So yeah guys, thank you so much for tuning into this live stream. It's a very experimental one. I don't expect this to get a lot of views because it's not gaming, but Oh well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, make sure you guys hit that like button, and I will see you guys in the next one. Um, I just realized on the cover of this book, it says The Naturals, but there's something covered covered up. It uh, looks like an S. The Nature's Service? I don't know. Huh. 
Oh, wow, that's a detail I've never noticed before. So, yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. If you guys did, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. If you guys want to see more, comment down below what your favorite part of the book was. I have to say that this you, you are this, you are that. It's a very um sexual sounding, and I don't think they intended it for it like that, but I did. I'm sorry, Jennifer Lynn Barnes, but you, you made something sound very sexual. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. If you guys did, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys next one. Peace and have a wonderful day. Bye.